this trip was particularly interesting to me. As you'll see by behind me as I'm talking to the camera for the other video, you can see that the trees and everything are moving a fair bit, which meant that there was a fair bit of turbulence, and so we'll get to that in just a moment. But what this all means is that uh, the pilot had to take quite a lot of care for planning this to make sure that um, the wind was always going to be in the right direction and that type of thing because we are going to be flying in a very small plane and so therefore small gusts of wind make quite a big difference to the flight. So once all the planning had taken place and we were all ready to go we got in the plane and all the tests began. Now the one that will be most visible here is where the pilot's testing or the engine to make sure that it performs in the way that it should. So he plays around with the mixture of the ratio between fuel and air and also plays around with the pitch of the prop. Now the idea of both of these tests is to make sure that the engine does what it's supposed to do when uh, conditions return back to normal. Basically you don't want the engine to stop. Now at the time of this recording I was also recording for another video, that's the confusing sat-nav video. Uh, that, that's quite worth a watch, so if you haven't seen it I recommend taking a look. Um, but anyway, we're ready to take off and away we go. Now somewhere around now you're going to start noticing that the plane's shaking around a fair bit. It was quite funny, we actually watched a few other planes take off through this area so we knew exactly when it was going to hit. It, it hit every single plane at roughly the same point, so it was like... A, um, it was quite funny to sort of see just how much the planes moved and then the pilot would correct and everything and uh, away they'd go. And so uh, anyway, it happened to us as well and we knew what to expect and uh, the pilot did a beautiful job of uh, dealing with it. Um, we then had a fairly mixed flight. Some of the times it was uh, sort of moderately bumpy, there were a few times it was very bumpy, and uh, then there was even the odd quiet patch in there as well. But the thing I'm most interested in showing you now is the landings and uh, takeoffs, because I've already shown you one takeoff, now we're going to show you a landing. So we actually had to circle around uh, this airport. Not actually, it wasn't. It was less of a necessity, but more of, hey, let's do this just so then we've got a good idea of what we're uh, what we're dealing with. We can do things like have a look at the windsock and all that type of stuff. So it was really quite interesting, sort of flying around, and uh, the whole trip out there had been slow. It'd been about 40 minutes to uh, get out there, and then. Uh, as we started to turn around and go with the wind, suddenly the ground moved very fast below us, and that was quite cool to see. Uh, and then once again we sort of slowly turned back into the headwind to, um, uh, to, to come into land. Now, the interesting thing about this airport, you'll see that we're not in line with either of the runways. One runway is slightly to our right, and we're not in the right position for that. The wind's in the wrong direction for that. And then the other runway, we're not in the right position for that either, because uh, the reason for that is that there's actually a petrol station which is sitting right at the end of the runway. And so regulations say that we're not allowed to go and uh, land above the petrol station, as you might imagine. Uh, so therefore, what planes have to do at this airport is they have to come in at an angle and then right at the last moment that they turn and then uh, then they come in and land. And um, it was really quite a cool experience. Uh, once again, beautifully done considering what the conditions were. There were quite a few people that just didn't want to fly today. Um, so anyway, uh, he did a beautiful job of landing the plane, gets it down first go. Um, he was preparing us saying, well, we might have to go around and try again, and if need be, we may just have to give up and go back home. But uh, no, it, it all worked out first go. So while we were here, we watched uh, a few other planes land, and uh, they were quite exciting landings to watch. Um, sadly, I don't have any of those on video, other than one, but that was a fairly benign one. Uh, but then eventually it was our turn to uh, take off again, so away we went. Uh, this is quite interesting also in that uh, because of the sort of the way everything's built, the runway sort of before the runway actually begins, it's sort of it's, uh, it's sort of fairly inclined. Um, and we decided, well, hey, we don't know what the wind's going to do. Maybe it's going to cut out the last moment, so we'll try and get as much uh, speed as early on as possible. And so we start off on the syncline, we start going down, and he just revs it up like you do. And then uh, we're going forward, and uh, we actually took off before the runway began, <laughs> just because there was that much headwind. Um, 
So anyway, uh, we take off, all, all goes well, and um, uh, once again it's another pretty bumpy landing. And then uh, eventually we get back to the place. Now the interesting thing is that I mentioned before it took 40 minutes to get out there. And then uh, coming back it took us about 30 minutes or so. I didn't measure it precisely so I can't tell you exactly. But it was definitely a quicker trip coming back. So as we were coming in, um, flaps were used very late. Normally you use them a bit earlier than we did here. But uh, because the headwind was so strong it was just like it was going to take us ages to get in there if uh, we slowed down with the flaps. Uh, if you don't know, the flaps are the little... So you've got the... The bits that move right at the end of the wing, those are not the flaps, those are the ailerons, they make use of uh, twist side to side. The flaps are the bits which are closer in, and they give you more lift at a given speed and so therefore allow you to fly slower. They also slow you down a little bit as well, but that's a long complicated story and I'm not going to go into it here. Uh, but anyway, the point was is that um, because the wind uh, was so much we actually had to keep those up a bit longer than normal. And so they, they didn't come down until right near the end. So uh, when we were coming in, he sort of uh, slowly eased off um, the engine there, just so that normally you, you sort of come and you judge the thing and you sort of um, you pull off the engine when you're ready and the thing sort of settles down. But here he... Because the wind was so gusty, you would you could have wind at one moment, and then suddenly the wind would be gone. And if that happens, then that means you've got no lift anymore, and so then you'd just uh, slam down and hit the ground uh, too quickly. So he was keeping the engine ready so that uh, if he had to take off again, he could. Uh, but the side effect of this was that because we had so much wind, we were still moving forwards. The wind was still going over the wing, and so therefore. Uh, we still had uh, too much lift and eventually he just had to cut out the engine and so then we came down. Um, but yeah, all in all, very, very well well flown. I was very impressed. Um, it was a great flight and uh, I look forward to many more. Uh, like I say, um, I filmed uh, quite an interesting challenge um, on these flights, so if you're interested, take a look at the other video to see what it was I was up to. Um, there's more photos up on funnyhacks.com, so if you are interested in having a look, I recommend you do so. That is all.